What is up everybody and welcome to episode one of Wrecking Crew, demolishing the case against Stephen Avery, a book written by John Farrick. Since I've started doing book reviews on the channel, this book has easily been the most requested book that I do. I finally got it and now I see why. I'm not overly far into it, but man, the detail in this book, the information that isn't necessarily in other books, it's absolutely fantastic. I definitely recommend picking it up. I got it on Amazon. That's probably the easiest way to purchase it. Uh, so definitely, 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 if you're into this case, if you're into making a murderer, you are 100% gonna wanna pick up Wrecking Crew. He, John goes over things in way more detail, obviously, than I do in the videos. So again, pick it up, such a great read. John starts out by talking about how Teresa Halbach was also an adult photographer. Now this means absolutely nothing in regards to her personality or anything like that. I just wanna throw that out there. From my perspective, this I would absolutely never judge. The fact that she was an adult photographer to me does not mean anything negative about her at all. It's a great way, as a photographer, it is a great way to make some money. And as a photographer, you need to take almost every avenue possible in order to pay the bills. So her business, Photography by Teresa also included taking nude photos of her clients and couples, as well as taking pictures for Auto Trader. Two of her clients were married, but ended up getting divorced, and she started seeing the husband, ex husband of that relationship, whose name was Bradley, but their relationship was only physical. After Teresa was killed, they found a trunk with pictures in it of the couple. And at this point, police did not know whether this had anything to do with her disappearance or not. Bradley was quoted by saying, by the end, Teresa was leading a double life. Now, John cites all of his sources at the bottom of the page. When he uses quotes and things like that from people, uh, there's a number and he cites where each information came from, which is a brilliant idea, because obviously, it's just the nature of people, they're gonna question everything, where does this information come from? But John cites where all, is, all of his information comes from, and I think that is a great idea. That hasn't been done in any of the other books I've read so far, I really, really like that. John talks about how on November 3rd, news reports of Teresa Halbach started to come across the news as well as pictures of her RAV4. And then on November 4th, a man named Kevin, whose last name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, walked inside a Senex station and saw the poster of Teresa Halbach and her RAV4 that stated she was missing. Kevin remembered seeing the RAV4 on both November 3rd and November 4th by the East Twin River Dam in Michotte. Then, while he was in the Senex station, he saw an officer, remember who that officer turned out to be? And he told the officer that he saw the car that matched the description that was on the poster, told him where it was, and then he left. And as far as he was concerned, that was it. As we know now, that officer turned out to be Andrew Colburn, a man that later made a phone call calling in the license plate of the RAV4, and it sounded like he was already looking at it. So could it have been he went to the place where Kevin told him the RAV4 was going to be and to make sure that it was the RAV4? He called in the plates and had it confirmed, and then allegedly, 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 uh, had someone or himself moved the RAV4 to the Avery Salvage Yard, allegedly. Kevin did not watch Making a Murderer right away. It was about a year later when he finally tuned in to Making a Murderer, and after he did watch it, he sent a text message to a friend. You'll never believe who this message <laughs> who his friend turned out to be who got this message, Scott Taddock. That's right, that Scott Taddock, saying he needed to get in touch with Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery's lawyers. Of course, Scott did not message back, so then Kevin texted him again, 
And Scott said that he was sick and that he'd call back later. And of course, Scott never called back later. John talks about at the time of Teresa Halbach's disappearance, her RAV4 had no front end damage, but when they found it, it showed it did have front end damage. Now, could that front have could that front end damage have happened when someone was allegedly moving the car to the salvage yard? Definitely seems like a possible scenario. Now, Brian Dassey, who was another one of the Dassey brothers, uh, was never called to the stand, so the jury never heard his statement or testimony, which was him stating that his brother Bobby Dassey, a man who's highly suspected of allegedly doing the crime, Bobby Dassey told his brother that uh, Stephen Avery could not have killed Teresa Halbach that, quote, I saw her leave the property that day. So Bobby Dassey is telling his brother Brian that he saw Teresa leave the property that day. Imagine if Brian Dassey was actually called to the stand and testified in court. It would have absolutely ruled out everything that his brother Bobby Dassey had to say. Bobby Dassey, of course, was the state's star witness. So if Brian Dassey was called to the stand, he could have erased, eradicated everything Bobby Dassey said. Man, it just, wow, it's so sad that Brian was never called. We could, I could, I would much rather not be sitting here right now doing these videos on this case because Bobby Dassey was called to the stand and Stephen and Brendan were never sent to prison. John talks about how on November 8th, 2005 was the day they found Teresa's license plates inside one of the cars on the salvage yard. But on the initial search on November 6, 2005, nobody found the license plates in this car. It wasn't until two days later, November the 8th, which turned out to be a huge day where all, all kinds of stuff was found, that good old Mark Weirgert went back out to the salvage yard and found the license plates. He also talks about how on November 8th was also the same day the key magically appeared in Stephen Avery's bedroom after it already being searched many, many times. So, so far they found the license plates that were never found before and the key magically appeared in Stephen Avery's bedroom that had already been searched multiple times. Uh, also, later that same day, another officer found some charred bones in Stephen Avery's yard in the grass in Avery's backyard, which they chose not to document at all. There were no pictures, there were no video footage of them finding the bones. You would think that if they thought these were Teresa Hallbach's bones, or finding any bones when you're looking, when, when there's a murder case happening, you definitely are going to document it somehow, picture, video, something, anything, draw a diagram, literally anything. How are you not taking pictures of where this ex extremely crucial piece of evidence is found? Talks about how Brian Dassey said that Bobby Dassey hung a deer in his mom's garage shortly after that Halloween. Do you, what about the theory that it wasn't actually a deer? This is disgusting, by the way. But what about the theory that it wasn't a deer? Could he have been covering something up? Or even if it was a deer, could he have been covering up the blood with the deer's blood of something he had done in the garage, or could it not have been a deer at all? Remember, Teresa Hallbach's bones actually turned up in a burn barrel on Bobby Dassey's property mixed with some animal bones. Definitely something to think of, maybe not something to think about, but definitely something to consider. And remember, Bobby Dassey was an expert hunter, and He's used to taking care of animal bodies. They talk about this because of how what happened to Teresa's body. Uh, and even Bobby Dassey stated that Stephen Avery was not that big of a hunter. So he probably wasn't used to doing what was done to uh, Teresa's body. Brendan Dassey clearly wasn't uh, capable of doing what was done to uh, Teresa's body. Stephen Avery was never uh, found guilty of doing what was done to Teresa's body 
after she was killed. It was Brendan that was found guilty of doing what was done to Teresa's body after she was killed. Imagine. Imagine. Frustrating. Angering. I don't get it. This book is fantastic. This is where I'm going to leave episode one. Get this book. So much detail that you may or may not have heard before. And if you have heard it before, he talks about it very differently, giving his perspective on things. And so far, it's fantastic. Pick it up. Amazon. You can probably get it in bookstores. I don't know. I got it on Amazon. Let me know where you got it so I can uh, plug that as well. Such a great book. Give him a follow on Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm really going to enjoy reading this book. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again soon.